All right, good morning, everybody. This is Mike Courtney, Mass Mutual Eastern PA. I'm joined by Steve Parisi, President and CEO, IBC Global. We're here midweek, coming to the end of October 2020. How's it going, Steve? How are you today? Great, Mike. It's the, the final countdown, last quarter, baby. It's going nonstop. Yeah, it's fun. We yeah. got a, we got a, we got a big pipeline. We got a lot of cases to push through. I know you do as well. Um, what's, as we head into the end of the year here, um, you know, I've recently been talking to more and more brokers that I work with who are, you know, struggling to find permanent life insurance solutions. A lot of carriers have pulled back on product, have restricted underwriting, um, mass mutual in particular has rolled out some different riders throughout the year uh, that frankly I'm still getting my arms around as far as the, the planned LIR. Um, you've been a master at this over the last few years with regards to blending our LISA rider, which is the one year term, blending our LIR, which is a paid up additions rider. How do you model these policies where you're minimizing risk, increasing flexibility, and increasing cash value. How does, you know, without going through the mechanics yeah. of how the software works, you know, in your mind when you're putting together a plan, how do those different riders come into play and what's the benefit for the client? Yeah, definitely. So when you look at all those different riders, especially that one year term rider, um, with a lot of whole life insurance products, I like that rider for two reasons. One, it allows a policyholder to really minimize their insurance expenses, specifically their base premium, and plow funds into paid up additions, which does buy them more death benefit, but they accelerate the immediate cash value and long term cash value as well. So I like it for that reason, but the main reason I like it. <clears throat> is take Mass Mutual for example, you mentioned their LISA rider. Mass Mutual typically, or I should say traditionally, is not a very flexible company, right? So if I come to you and say, hey, I wanna, Mike, I want the ability to pay in $100,000 per year into a cash value life insurance policy, and the death benefit's important, but cash, cash accumulation is a huge goal of mine, that's my interest. So I want to be able to pay in 100K per year, but I don't want to get a bill for 100K a year. That's not my thing. So with Mass Mutual, if someone wants to pay in 100K year one, then 30K year two, then 70, bounce up and down, it's very, very difficult to do that with them. Their, their planned ailer opened up a little bit of flexibility, but it's still restrictive. A in my, little bit. A little bit. It's not, it's not there yet, but they are improving it as I see them continue to, to make updates. I'm sure they will. But the lister component, if that is attached to a policy, you can take a company like a mass mutual that a lot of people are attracted to, right? When we design policies for corporations, they always, 100% of the time, are in the discussion. They're an attractive company for, for good reason. So that lister component which is a one-year term rider, which is available with a lot of insurance carriers, allows you to adjust payments with Mass Mutual every year and not have to go through medical underwriting. That's the key. So Meaning, there's- Meaning, mm -hmm. if I have a stated lesser premium on an annual basis, I can overfund that on the fly at my discretion? Um, so when the window of opportunity, good question, exists to throw money into that lister, that one year term and PUAs is really on your anniversary date. Okay. When the premiums do, so it's it's not that exact day. You've got but to- But any given year- <clears throat> Correct. I could overfund that lister payment, satisfy the lister premium, 
and then see the rest of those dollars go into paid up additions? Correct. Correct. And, and we've had a lot of people do that where, for example, if someone is anticipating a real estate sale or they know, hey, I'm going to be receiving a lump sum within the next four to five years, it's with certainty it's coming in. And a lot of mass mutual agents aren't aware you can do this kind of stuff with the creative planning. We can have a policy where maybe I pay in 30K for the first four years, and then I make a huge catch up payment, and it's 150,000 in year five, assuming I design it right, I don't trigger a mech or anything. You can make that type of payment and not have to go through any medical underwriting. Whereas with most designs with a basic mass product, you'd have to do that kind of stuff. And we're talking about mass in this specific scenario, but a lot of companies have very similar rules when you look at that flexibility, but that one-year term rider, whether it's term lister or the million other terms out there. Yeah. <laughs> what did Mass used to call it? Sipper or something like that? That was on the survivorship. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so there has to, you know, there's always <laughs> got to be an acronym. Yeah, and then some companies call it option Q or level Q term. All right, it's all the same thing. Right. But it does open up a lot of flexibility. So that that was technical, what we just talked about there. The main thing is kind of for a consumer or an agent looking at creative planning to say, okay, I think whole life, I think fixed premium, I just keep paying the same amount. Where you can shift it into a extremely high cash value policy from day one and very, very flexible. Where, again, going back to the example, I want to be able to pay in 100K per year, but I don't want a bill for that. I can set my premium at call it 10,000 and then add up to 100,000 each year, depending on my cash flow, my situation. Very, very flexible. So now, if life happens, you can really reduce your, your call it liability with the base premium. But if things go very, very well, you can plow funds into PUAs, which accelerate your cash value growth and accelerate your death benefit, especially on a long-term perspective. I know you've got a real detailed and uh, popular video uh, that comes up on YouTube and comes up on your website that uh, goes into much, much more detail, and much greater depth about this. So if anybody's interested in, in what we're talking about right now, I would encourage them to go over there because, <laughs> you know, I, I've been at this with specifically with Mass Mutual for quite some time now and never understood this before, yeah. um, you know, Theoretically, that one-year term rider, all I knew was cheaper premium for permanent death benefit, but very sensitive to dividend fluctuation. So mm -hmm. it always felt to me not so much like flexibility, but like cheaper premium, but I potentially could have a problem down the road if the dividend reduces and my lesser premium goes up. I didn't ever realize that there was so much flexibility with regards to how much premium I was paying into that rider yeah. and what the subsequent effect on the policy was. So yeah. that's, I think it's really an underused concept and I'm glad that this is, that we're talking about this. Yeah, you know, that video, I think we have it titled OYT, One Year Term Rider, Full Transparency or, or something like that. But to your point, you know, that, it's called a blended PUA rider because it blends PUAs and, and a decreasing term rider is the cost of that term does increase over time. But at the same time, the face amount, the death benefit of the term decreases. Typically, your net cost doesn't go up much. But the thing is, like to your point where you mentioned, hey, it's very sensitive based off of the company's present dividend rate. And if that goes down, the policyholder may have to dish more out of pocket to satisfy the term cost. Absolutely true if you stop there, but at the same time, as the agent, you have so much control where A, if you are making a large PUA payment, you can just put more money in that and that satisfies everything. B, the client can't pay, you can partially or fully reduce that term. I have to make sure it doesn't mech, but you plan ahead to make sure that it doesn't happen. Point being, I mean, it requires you know some due diligence. You got to be thorough, understand how that rider and the product works. But once you know how to drive the car, you can do a lot of good with it. <clears throat> well, you have to be thorough past year one too, as right. a as a servicing agent, um, and that's yeah. something that 
you know, we've touted this with your group a lot in the past, and it's something that I feel like has really fallen off in recent years. You know, like I, you, know, you know, I work out of a mass mutual agency that's a pretty healthy blend of older seasoned agents and younger um, entrepreneurial type agents. And the, the servicing agent uh, has really gone away. Um, I see a lot of the younger folks and by younger, you know, I'm talking my age as well, um, who are out there and don't always understand what they sold and don't necessarily want to service it down the road yeah. as questions come up. And I watch you and your group work with these clients on an ongoing basis to make sure not only did you put a good flexible plan in place, but how to really um, execute on that plan and make sure that as things change, you're staying nimble. Uh, so that's, you know, big kudos to you guys. I think that's important for anybody who is looking to associate with your group as well, but that, you know, that ongoing service model is in place. Yeah, no, thanks for mentioning that. I mean, that that is a lot of work that, that's typically always behind the scenes. Um, and it's just customer service. And when you look at companies that crush it, their customer service is is top tier. I was thinking of Apple. I mean, anytime I've had an issue, they're on the ball calling me, which I, I like a lot. So we try and emulate that. Um, and how I look at it, because when you have a high amount of volume as far as business coming in, that's great. Like, that's my dream. Okay, this is great. We got the volume. We can keep hiring people. Agents love it because they don't have to prospect. Let's just put the pedal down. But then the second problem that occurs from that is you've got all this activity now. You have to service it. This is not just a, a sales shop where you and I say, okay, let's just sell a policy and say, see you later. Because, you know, when people purchase this product, they want the flexibility that goes into the, the thing we were just talking about, the one-year term rider. You can provide that for someone. But if life happens and I can't pay in as much, well, it's important for the agent to have those review calls, review meetings, review programs, everything we have that are always there making themselves available to that prospect, that client, because they're not going to remember. Just like if you and I go to a doctor and they diagnose us with whatever, like I'm not going to remember the term or the things I have to do, which those regular checkups, they're going to remind me of that. Okay, here's the checkup here. Continue to do the right thing. So it, that's very important. And yeah, I mean, we've, we've invested a ton there on the technology space and then just manpower as we hire more uh, individuals for our client relations department. Yeah. Huge, huge to have in place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, anybody who, who's out there listening, any, any brokers or independent financial advisors, check out Steve, IBC Global, Steve Parisi, president and CEO. Steve's a great guy. He's got a great team. Um, I'm coming to you from Mass Mutual, Eastern Pennsylvania. If you're a broker and you're interested in life insurance, disability, long-term care, fixed annuities, touch base. Let's talk. We still got time before the end of the year. Big push, right, Steve? Right on, right on. We've got your contact info below, Mike. I definitely encourage anyone to reach out to you. Huge help. Nice. All right, thanks, Steve. Have a great day. Everybody have fun. Be safe. Talk to you soon. Likewise. Thanks, Mike.